we want to look at an example of a redox titration problem. And the main issue with these problems for most students is being able to determine what kind of a reaction we have to begin with. There are a number of ways to look at these problems and determine them. So this one is actually being done, being done by brute force. What does that mean? That means that a number of you will look at this and say, oh yeah, I know that's a precipitation reaction, or oh, I know that's an acid base, or oh yeah, that's totally a redox reaction. But there's a number of you out there who will look at this and be like, I have absolutely no idea where to start, what to do, I have no idea at all. And so this video is mainly for those of you that have absolutely no idea where to start, have no idea what's going on, or anything. So what I wanna do, is this literally is going to be baby steps for a lot of you you're going to be like oh my god she's going to do what um, you can forward fast through this first part if you want um, if you if it's not pertaining to you only watch what you need that being said this will be a little bit longer because i am going to find all of the oxidation states to show how we can find if it's redox um, and that kind of will give you a review for oxidation states as well as other tidbits so this question is one I took right out of Alex so that you can see exactly what the question looks like, what exactly it's asking, and how to find it. So what it wants to do is it wants to know if it's a precipitation reaction, an acid-base reaction, or if it's a redox. Now it can only be one of them. It can't be more than one. That's why it has the radio buttons. So ultimately it's going to ask you to calculate mass percent. So first we've got to figure out what type of reaction is and then we'll do the calculation. So, first of all, it says precipitation. Well, if it's a precipitation, or as I call it, that PPT reaction, that means a solid has to form. So right off the bat, do we see any solids? And the answer is no. I don't see any S's on the right-hand side. So I know right away that it can't be a precipitation reaction. So I'm just, oh, of course, it's not going to let me do that. But you could draw a little line because it's an image. So it's not a precipitation reaction. Okay, so... Acid base. Well, I, I see some OH, but I don't really see an H. I'm not really sure, right? Because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable enough yet with acids and bases, so I'm not 100% sure on that. And redox, that just scares the hell out of me, right? I don't understand it. I'm still not comfortable with it. I don't have a freaking clue what's going on with that. So what I need to do... Oh, what just happened? Oh, nice. Lovely, live. That's great. I need to figure out if it's a redox equation. And then if it's not a redox, we already know it's going to be an acid base. So how do I do that? Well, I need to find my oxidation states for each one of these compounds. So let's start with the C3, go away, H5O, CO2, H3. Okay, that looks awful, right? Well, we don't know what carbon is, right? So that's going to be our X. Hydrogen is always what? It's always a plus one. And oxygen's always a what? It's always a minus two. Oh, look, there's another carbon, but now there's a three hanging out there, so I got three X plus three times two is six. I know that oxygen's always a minus two. And then I got that three still hanging out, and I know hydrogen's always a plus one. All right, doesn't that look disgusting? So now I've got three X plus five minus 2 plus 3x, oh here we go, minus 12 plus 3 equals 0. Then I can simplify a little bit more, I've got 6x, and then I've got this 5 minus 2, that's 3, 3 and 3 is 6, minus 12 is minus 6. Then I get 6x equals 6, and I get x equals plus 1. So that's what my carbon is. Yeah, all that work for that teeny tiny little nasty thing, right? Well, then we've got an O and an H. Well, we know that oxygen's always what? Minus 2. And I know hydrogen's always what? Plus 1. Okay, that side's done. So now we're going to come over here and do the other side. So I've got C3H5O, CO2, 3. Now this time I notice there's a charge, a minus 3 hanging out. That is very important. So let me draw the squiggles. So again, we don't know carbon, so we've got 3x plus 5 times, oh yeah, that's plus 1. Then an oxygen's always a minus 2. Now I'm going to run out of room, aren't I? And then I've got plus 3x plus 6 times negative 2 equals neg... Oh, you knew that was going to happen. 
And that's going to equal to, I'm going to put on this little line, a minus 3. Because it tells me the overall charge up there is a minus 3. So I'm going to simplify that and get 3x plus 5 minus 2 plus 3x minus 12 equals minus 3. See, now I didn't run out of room. And then when I get a little cuter, it's going to be 6x, and then now I've got plus 3 minus 12 minus 9 equals minus 3, and then I get 6x equals, well, look at that, 6 and x equals plus 1. Oh no, what happened here? They look the same, right? Because I know that oxygen's always up minus 2, and hydrogen's always up plus 1. So, in this case, look at that. Carbon didn't change. Oxygen's the same and hydrogen's the same. So it's not a redox equation. If it's a redox equation, one of your elements, they have to change their oxidation states. So, in this case, it's going to be an acid-base reaction. So you would che check acid-base. And then here it says, if you said this was an acid-base reaction, enter the chemical formula of the reactant that is acting as a base. Well, what do we know from this class? If it's an acid, it always starts with what? It starts with an H. If it's a base, it always ends in what? OH. So it's got to be over here on the left. So which one of these has an OH? Oh, look, there's an OH right there. So that OH minus is acting as the base. So that's what you put over here in the little box. Now, we need to calculate the mass percent. So how are we going to do that? Well, it's like we're starting all over, right? Now we have another problem we have to do. So I'm just going to kind of roll all that out of the way because that looks all scary, nasty, and gross that we did. So what am I going to do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write, rewrite that equation that was up there. So I've got a C H, oh, I see three, sorry. H5 O C O 2 H 3 aq plus 3 oh minus aq it goes to the some other gross yucky thing right c3 h5 o c o 2 3 3 minus aq plus Three. Let's kind of mark that out. We don't need that now. H2O liquid. Okay, so what did it tell us in the problem? Well, it told us that we had what? We have 12 grams of citric acid. So that's this gross, nasty thing here. And then what? We had 14.4 milliliters of 0 0.3100 molar. So now where'd I get that? I got that way back up here, right? Said I had 12 grams of the candy. So that's here it says it's citric acid in a certain candy in 100 milliliters of water and titrates this solution to the endpoint with 14.4 milliliters of 0 0.3100 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Well, it's sodium hydroxide solution and again, I don't have sodium anywhere because sodium is always soluble. I just have the ion left over. So here's this information that I have. It says I have 100 milliliters of water. If you want to put that over here, you can. But it's just saying the candy is in the water, so it has no bearing on the problem. So what am I going to do first? Well, I notice I've got two quantities here under the OH. So what in the world do I want to do with that? Well, ultimately I'm going to have to do what? I'm finding mass percent. Well, if this is the mass I have, then I'm going to have to get another mass. So ultimately I need to find grams, and I'm going to be lazy, of citric acid. That's what I have to find. Well, let me think that through. If I've got this right here from these two quantities, this is what I need. So this is needed. So if I'm thinking about this, I know that I'm going to first have to find some moles of this OH minus. And then once I have that, I'm going to have to get what? Well, I'm going to have to do a mole to mole ratio. 
And then once I'm going to have to do it then, I'm going to have to find grams of citric acid. So that's using the mole chart from this week. So we're actually starting at moles. So we need a mole to mole ratio, and then we need to find grams. So I'm going to start with this quantity of two things. So I've got molarity, right? So I've got 0 0.3100 moles of the OH minus. Now, you can do this per liter and make an extra conversion. So I'm going to do that, or you could just make that per 1,000 milliliters. So I have milliliters already, so I'm just going to go ahead and say per 1,000 milliliters. And then I have this 14.4 milliliters. So my milliliters cancel. I'm done with that. Now I've got moles of OH, but I didn't want moles. It says I need to do a mole to mole ratio. So I've got, I want the citric acid, so I have one mole. And like I said, I'm lazy. I'm not going to write all that out of the citric for every three moles of the OH minus. And look, those moles cancel with those moles. And then I need to go find the molecular mass or molecular weight of the citric acid. And I did that. I got 192.14 grams of citric. And then I went and did that on my handy dandy little calculator. And I got 0 0.285904. Grams of citric. Okay, so that's the part that I got from my sample. But I need to find the mass percent. So remember, the mass percent is the part over the whole times 100. So the part that I have is what I just found. The whole thing is how much that candy, so that's the 12 grams times 100. And then I put that in my nifty little calculator and it spit out this 2.382536. And when I looked, I only needed three significant figures. So the 2 is less than 5, so I got 2.38%. So hopefully that helps you to see how to find a precipitation versus an acid base versus a redox and then how to use the information found to do the mass percent. If you have any questions as usual, please let me know.